You're listening to The Marketing Funnel Show, episode number 40. Have you ever asked yourself, why isn't this working? Why aren't people buying from me? Well, today's guest, Kay Richardson, is gonna dive into that because she spent the first few years of her business, a number of years ago, in the trenches figuring this out, and now she is an absolute expert and helps others. So let's dive in to find your yes factor. Welcome to the Marketing Funnel Show. I'm your host, Michelle Evans, and this is the podcast for coaches, experts, and online business owners to learn how to go from simply surviving to sold out using the power of marketing funnels. All right, let's jump into today's show. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Marketing Funnel Show. You know, I talk a lot about creating marketing funnels and creating the opportunity to get people to um, get excited about what you have to offer. But for many of us, we still need to do one-on-one sales on the phone, right? Like, or or in person or at an event or something. We still need to um, talk to people to close that final sale, maybe even just on a webinar. Um, and that can be sort of the point where your funnel breaks down or just doesn't work as well as you want it to. And I know because I spent a good chunk of my time a few years back really stuck in this place where I could get lots of people into my um, business. I didn't have funnels fully set up at that time, but I could get them in, but then I couldn't close anybody. Everybody was saying no to me. It was so frustrating. So when today's guest, Kay Richardson, um, introduced herself, I thought, oh my gosh, I need to have her on the show because sales, sales that feels good is actually something that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. So let me tell you a little bit about Kay. So she um, started off her business with this question, why, why, why isn't this working? She had no business background, but she had a strong desire to be successful. So Kay sat at her kitchen table over 13 years ago with tons of marketing books and uncovered why her most ideal clients ignored her phone calls, didn't hire her after hearing her speak, and continued to choose another consultant, anyone else really. After developing her own yes factor, Kay built a brand that landed clients like, get this, Adobe, the US government, Cargill, and other private firms before the age of 30. Kay is the founder of the incredible salon coaching high achiever entrepreneurs to reach impossible goals. Kay also developed the Yes Factor system, helping entrepreneurs find their unique zone of genius and create clients who say yes. Kay's the author of What a Woman's Gotta Do, igniting readers to get off the couch and take action. And she's also the mother of two young men and still gets nervous when she's out amongst groups. So you're gonna really enjoy the stories and the teaching that Kay does today because it's so applicable no matter what kind of marketing funnel you have. So let's dive in and find out how Kay developed her own yes factor and how you can do the same for your business. Hello, Kay. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me, Michelle. Yes. Look, you and I connected, I don't know, like a month and a half ago or so, and you told me some really great stories. And so I'm excited to bring you to the listeners of the Marketing Funnel Show today. Um, But before we get to that, before we get to the good stuff, I'd love for you to just talk about who you are, how you got into business, and who you serve so that we understand kind of where your insights are coming from. Awesome. Would love to. Well, I am Kay Richardson, also known as the Idea Igniter. And I basically was forced into business about 15 years ago, graduated from college as an occupational therapist assistant. And at that time, there was this big crash with Medicare and how they were revitalizing, you know, the Medicare system. And it caused um, thousands of jobs to be lost for the healthcare professionals um, in therapy. And at the time I had to go to a temp assignment in a hospital and I was just tired of being in that position. So one day 
I decided that I was going to look in the job classifieds, which I'm telling my age on a Sunday. <laughs> and, right there with you. <laughs> and there was this one opportunity, which at the time, the opportunity was making $90 per week. Now, granted, I was making $400 a week, but I was like, look, if I just jump my feet in and maybe something else would begin to happen for me. So I quit the day job of making $400 a week. Couldn't tell my family or friends because they would all think I'm crazy, right? And, you know, <laughs> I, I just went for it. No business background, didn't know how to market myself, didn't know how to sell, but I began to network with other healthcare professionals, you know, beginning to ask, you know, who's in need of therapists and, you know, where do you go network to the other opportunities? And that's pretty much how I landed into entrepreneurship as an occupational therapist. So with that, I began to learn how to do speaking opportunities, began to get consulting contracts, because I also specialize in ergonomics, which is basically understanding how an employee um, work, in, how they work in their environment so that they can have fewer injuries or no injuries at all. And with that, I was going up against really top-notch companies who, number one, had more marketing dollars. Number two, they had more manpower than I obviously did being a solopreneur. And obviously, it was a, a very male-dominant um, industry. And I was just this really young young lady. I mean, I was in about my 20s, my early mid-20s when I was out here trying to figure this thing out. And that's how I landed into entrepreneurship. And people started seeing my progress and my success. And women will come up to me and ask, well, how did you do this? And how did you do that? I would just give them free consultations, you know, just because that was what I enjoyed doing, you know, helping people. And a few years later, I stumbled across coaching. I walked into this room with over 900 other entrepreneurs and my mind was just blown away of just the opportunity to really make a difference and learn so much more about coaching and business development that I'm like, hey, I've been doing this shit for free. Excuse my French, but I was just so excited. And I'm like, okay. You're like, people will pay for this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you walk into this room with 900 people and you're like holy cow there's some money to be made here so what what you do from that um and from there i begin to just network and meet other people and started basically giving away free coaching and helps in regards to marketing yourself branding yourself positioning yourself and really I became very clear about how to help people develop their 30 second pitch, elevator pitch, because that's usually where most people fail in the very beginning, which keeps them pretty much stuck and pissed off why clients are saying no to them or nothing at all. Okay. So from your experience, because clearly you had to pitch yourself a lot, right? To yes. go up against these other, so you saw that when you did not have a good elevator pitch, what happened? Basically, people always told me no. And, or they either said to me, okay, we have someone. Mm -hmm. And I, I just became so frustrated during the process that I really had to sit down and start researching and understanding what made me different from the other individuals who were quote unquote doing the same thing that I was doing. But there was this zone of genius that I had that they didn't have, which I'm an occupational therapist. They were either number one salespeople or they didn't really have a whole lot of extensive training, but yet they were doing something similar, but not as detailed as I was doing it. So I began to just listen to the conversation that I was having with the individuals who I happened to get the appointments with, and I began to listen to their language and how they described the problem that they want to solve. Because I was basically going in them telling, telling them my process and my language, and that wasn't attracting them to me. Mm. So that was the You know what? I want to pause right there because it's so... 
like that is so valuable. So even though you were going through this painful process of yes. not getting hired, getting the nose, like, you know, which can be, I mean, we laugh about it now, but it's hard. Like I've hard. gone through it where I've, you know, had hundreds of people say no to me. Right. Yes. It can be really hard. So I know, you know, looking back, you know that you came out the other side, but I'm sure that there are people listening who are in that place right now, who are like, why doesn't anybody want to hire me? Like, what is going on? And they're not laughing because it's hard. And so for you, you just took a step back and said, all right, you know, what's, what's the, what's going on here? What's keeping them from saying yes. Is that right? Yes, exactly. And what, so what was your biggest aha? I mean, it sounds like language was a bit of it, but what other ahas did you have? The other aha that I had was I found myself doing most of the talking instead of listening. Mm. Because when I begin to listen more, I begin to reformulize what they were saying and repeating it back to them in my own way. But it then shifted the conversations to say, yes, we want to have more of you. We need to hire you. We need training from you. And that you was understand us, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and basically you're, you're just being a really good listener and applying your expertise to it. Yes. I love it. So, so, so one of the things that I really liked and valued about you is that you're not just teaching based on books or a course that you took or whatever. You were in the trenches with your, you know, sleeves rolled up and your boots on doing this. And so now you've taken all of this experience and this knowledge and how do you help people now? Now I help people understand what's going to get the yes. And what do I mean by that? I help people understand, number one, what's the real problem that they solve? Because, you know, there are so many problems that we can solve as entrepreneurs, but we might not be pinpointing on the right problem that that person is currently experiencing that they really want solved. Let's just pause there for a minute, because this is the number one problem that I run up against with people trying to make marketing funnels. They don't want to have to choose just one outcome at the end. And so they're wanting to message tons and tons of things, which confuses people. So I'd love for you to talk about how you help people get clear on that. And then if you also run up against this with clients of yours who don't maybe want to pinpoint themselves because they're afraid of losing out on business. Yes. And it is definitely something that is, it takes a lot of, convincing <laughs> to my clients and and even for myself at that moment when I was in that critical phase um, of really becoming clear on the number one problem that the clients who I was marketing to wanted solve. So I'll give you an example of one of my high-end cleaning company clients. Yeah, I do. So with this client, she is a cleaning company. As we know, there are thousands of cleaning companies, correct? Yeah, there's a um, dime a dozen. You can hire them. I mean, they hang things up on your mailboxes, right? Exactly. But this young lady came to me not because she wasn't attracting business. She wanted to shift the type of clients that she was working with. So her goal was, number one, to become a high-end condominium cleaner. So obviously you can't come to a high-end client in million dollar condos with the same message and marketing that you would for, for a residential client. Mm -hmm. So we had to uncover what were the problems that they really wanted solved? What was getting in the way of them choosing her? I began to just question her to understand this market and understand what she was saying, understanding why she wanted this shift and her experiences in the past. And even with a few high-end clients she already had, what was the reason that they called upon her and getting her to really step back in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. And when she, when she began to uncover those things just through me digging and digging deeper she began to grow her business 
she called me one night and said, Kay, I cannot believe this. I put my head to the ground thinking, this is not going to work, but I'm going to do it anyway. And she called me and she said, Kay, I had a $90,000 month in the month of, month of March. And my, my consistent months have been $50,000. And she was like, I cannot believe it because I didn't think what you told me was going to work. And it began to become so natural for me to do it that I would do it without thinking about it. And the numbers just showed up. Wow. And just so we know, like she had just one or two high-end clients before she started working with you. Yes. And so what is the difference? Uh, cause, uh, cause I know people are probably wondering what's the difference in a high-end cleaning charge versus like just a regular run of the mail cleaning charge. So for her, it was something similar as it was $150 for a regular, regular residential uh -huh. place. But this high-end condominium, it was about $500 because number one, significant, significantly different because yeah. number one, their floors were different. Uh -huh. So they needed a cleaning company that knew how to protect their investment. Mm. And that was the game changer. I love that. And sometimes it can be, um, so right in front of our face. Like she probably was like, of course I'm going <laughs> to use the right cleaning products. But people on the other end had to hear that she knew that, right? Exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay. So she could go from $150 for a cleaning to 500 for the same time period of cleaning, right? Exactly. So, which allowed her to grow her, I mean, almost double her monthly income. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. And so at the end, uh, she just started using that same language and I would imagine her business just kept growing and growing. Exactly. It kept growing and growing. And honestly, it took a year because again, she had to be comp become confident and me working with her to get over that fear of thinking, well, it's not working fast enough because usually that's the challenge with entrepreneurs. You know, it's like, we have to pay the bills. And I, and I understand because I've, I've been there, but you have to trust the process. You have to come back and see what didn't work. Let's tweak it and just continue rinsing and repeating the process. And that's the value of having, you know, your expertise, my expertise, having someone alongside of you through that process. Yeah. Yeah. So you help people, basically you mine, you mine them for, <laughs> for, um, these nuggets that are already in them, right? These are yes. like, she already knew this. She just didn't know that she knew it or how to say it or how to package exactly. it. Exactly. Because not only did we redevelop her messaging, we redevelop her branding so that it all flowed. She was able to get corporate contracts for cleaning for new construction where there were times where you know she would go to these guys with her message and her marketing and they shut the door in her face and when we revamped this process for her and how she showed up what she would say she was like oh my god people are starting to pay so much attention to me and she was just so blown away i'm like you just you can't give up i know what it's like for people to tell me no one time i know what it's like for them to tell me no a second time but we have to continue to go back Mm. And the results proved themselves, you know, yes. after she, after she did it. So, you know, we talked before and you gave me five really important teaching points that you learned from this work, not just from with this client, but with yourself and with your other clients. So you want to go into some of your teaching points and just let us bring us in on this goodness so that we can... <laughs> We can start thinking about this for ourselves. Yes. And I, and I kind of went over one of the major points um, in all of this, you know, in the process of where the mistakes are that entrepreneurs make. So number one, you have to let go of what you think is most important to the client. Mm -hmm. And that's when we talked about learning how to really listen and not listening from your expertise, but from your client being the expert because they know what they really want and need. Yeah. So that, and it's so important and not even just listening with like a, Oh, I know what to say next, but really hearing what they're saying. So that yes. you can make that shift from, 
hey, we'll save you a lot of time by cleaning your house to we're going to protect your investment by using high-end products that are designed for your flooring, right? Like that's exactly. a major shift. Okay, so what's number two? So number two is where is the client? And usually that's one of the challenges when people are doing their marketing because they're, they haven't really narrowed down who that ideal client is, they really struggle finding them because they are out there. If you can find one, you can find thousands. And that's all, that's the thing that I always say. If you can find one, there are thousands more of those individuals. You just have to become very clear, let go of the fear that it's not going to happen and be consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And really identifying, uh, I recently did a show that was on, you know, I know who my niche is, my niche, whatever you want to say, how do I get them to find me? And it's really on this, like know where they are, where are they hanging out? What are they talking about? Where are they paying attention? Exactly. Exactly. How about number three? Number three is getting a clear idea of what's keeping them up at night. Again, we don't have to guess anymore. There's the internet. There's just showing up where they are and just having a simple conversation and not making it all about you and trying to get the client, but create a conversation that will lead them to say, well, wow, I think you may really be able to help me. Yeah, it's important. And, and getting, getting beyond the surface right? Yes. Asking those deeper questions because people don't, they don't lead with their deepest (laughs) fears. They want to know that you're interested before they'll share it, but they'll share it, right? Exactly. So you really have to just keep asking and digging. All right. Number four. Number four is, I kind of touched on it a little bit, is have a simple conversation about what you do. Instead of introducing yourself, I always teach my clients to ask a question. Mm. So for me, I'll give you an example. Yeah, I was just going to say, can you help (laughs) with that one? So I'll give you an example for what that looks like for me. When I meet someone, I'll say something like, do you know a really badass entrepreneur who's really good at what they do, but they struggle to get clients or they struggle with marketing themselves and they are really afraid of asking for their worth. Do you know someone like that? Mm. Okay. That's powerful because a, if you're talking to an entrepreneur, they're probably like, yeah, that's me. (laughs) And B, it sets the context for what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Because it hooks them into making it not about you, but about the conversation you're creating together. Exactly. Mm, Love that. All right. And then number five. Again, number five is listen instead of being desperate. Mm. Because even though they have missed, although they may have said, yes, that's me, then I would continue to ask an additional question and another question to, again, have them just talk about themselves. I don't need to talk about me. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm listening deeply. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the classic How to Win Friends and Influence People from Dale Carnegie, right? He says, be interested, not interesting. Yes. And it's really this this philosophy in action. And, you know, Kay, I had a... a a coach, a mentor a few years back who I stopped working with because she told me, you know, that I should just go to networking events and literally just sell people right then. She's like, if you, if you want your business bad enough, you'll just go sell everywhere you go. And I was like, no, that doesn't match with me at all. I much more want to create that connection and understand how I can serve them before I'm just like, Hey, buy my thing. Hey, buy my thing. Right. And it yes. sounds like you're having that same approach with your clients. Yes. And, and I would agree with you because sometimes that's how we get clients that are not the right fit for us. They're miserable. We're miserable. And it just becomes this uncomfortable situation. So I've just learned to just take a step back and be patient and create the client. Yeah. And re- I love that whole create the client because yeah, when it's when people don't feel like they're sold on something, but they feel like they're stepping into the next right step 
for their business to grow, it's a whole different ball game. Or, if, you know, if you're selling to consumers, they're stepping into the right next um, problem sol solver for them, right? It's, it, it's a whole different ball game because it's collaborative versus you forcing things. Like it's just a really great way to approach working with clients. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> so, you know, if people, I'm sure people are listening and thinking, oh my gosh, I need to, uh, <laughs> I need to get some of K in my life to understand <laughs> what my, uh, what my pitch is, or maybe what those nuggets are that are hidden in my brain. What's the best way for people to start to connect with you? Well, the best way for people to start connecting with me is by taking my really simple quiz call. Basically, what's your yes factor? Where are you in the process of being a newbie? Maybe someone who has some experience or even being a seasonal entrepreneur, where are you in the process and what are the things that you need to do in order to stop getting the nose and get the get to the next step? So people can take the quiz at the yes factor quiz dot com. Mm, I love that. Okay. So the yesfactorquiz.com and I will um, link to it in today's show notes. So if you're listening to this on the go, you can just go to the show notes section and you can find that. And Kay, where could people find you online? They can find me at clientswhosayyes.com. That's the main hub for articles for my podcast. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on Facebook as the Idea Igniter. If you type in Idea Igniter, you will find me in those three locations. <laughs> Great. Yeah, perfect. And we'll link to those as well so people can find you. Well, I just, I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this because you know, getting, you know, I talk about marketing funnels and getting people in the door, but that last step of taking somebody from your marketing and into becoming a client, it can be really tricky for people. And I just, I loved your approach. I loved how you um, have been in the trenches and have done this. You're not just teaching theory, but you're teaching actual stuff that works to build businesses. Um, so I really appreciate you coming on and sharing this insight today. It's my pleasure. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Kay, for coming on and sharing your wisdom and insights with us. If you want to find Kay, you can, we're going to link up to all her stuff on today's show notes, which you can find at themarketingfunnelshow.com forward slash 40, just the number four zero. And if you're listening to this on the go on your app, you can just, you know, go into the app and we'll have it linked there as well. Um, and then be sure to take her Yes Factor quiz. It's really good and really insightful. And if you want to find the right marketing funnel for you to make sure that you're getting people in, that you're getting them ready to have this great conversation uh, and hire you and say yes to you, go ahead and hop on over to today's show notes where I will link up to the marketing funnel quiz. And in less than five minutes, you'll find out exactly which marketing funnel is right for you. And then you can take the yes factor quiz and you can find out how to turn those people in your marketing funnel into um, sales when you talk to them one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. All right. I look forward to seeing you next week on another great episode of the marketing funnel show. See you then. Yeah. <laughs>